بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الله عز وجل سيز كلا إذا دكت الأرض دكا دكا No when the earth has been leveled, pounded and crushed After Allah عز وجل exposed the reality of the people of Quraysh and their wrong perception uh, to the matter of uh, testing, depriving, and, and giving. And after he threatened them, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and condemned their behavior with the poor and the needy, Allah Azza wa Jal here is giving them a warning of the day they're denying the arrival uh, of which Allah Azza wa Jal Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them the consequence of the test uh, if they fail it. Allah Azza wa Jal is using the word kalla. Again, we've mentioned the, that the use of the word uh, kalla is for two reasons, is to rebuke and to negate the wrong perception or claim uh, people are making. So, Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, no, you're not taking lesson from the consequence of those who were punished before you, those arrogant, who denied and were stubborn and refused to accept faith. Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them that the issue is not like you uh, think, in how you perceive it. Not taking lessons from the consequence of those who denied before you, uh, and your wrong perception of Allah Azza wa Jal giving and depriving, and your immense love to wealth that leads you to oppress and wrong the poor and the needy. The issue is not like you believe and like you think, and that you will be left unattended, unaccounted for your deeds. Indeed, there is a terrifying day the introduction of which is that the land will be crushed and pounded. It will be leveled. Uh, all mountains will be made into dust on that day. Leveled to the ground. وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا Again, that day. That was an introduction to the day and then what happens on that day. And your Lord... And your Lord has come, and the angels rank upon rank, row after row. Allah Azza wa Jal will come on that day to judge people, to hold them to account. Allah will come on that day to hold people to account and with him will come the angels rank after rank and row after row each row surrounds the row in front of it they will all line up with submissiveness and humbleness to Allah that day when all messengers and prophets would refrain from interceding, interceding just for the fact that they need, people need Allah to start accountability. That's going to be a very long day. It's going to be 50,000 years. That's a long period to be start standing, waiting for something not knowing where you're going to be going not knowing which direction you'll be heading now regarding the word وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ and your Lord has come Allah Azza wa Jal as our righteous predecessors has certain attributes and our righteous predecessors have a methodology in dealing with these attributes. That is to believe that Allah possesses such 
an attribute without resembling Allah Azza wa to any of his creation and without asking how it happens or denying it in fear of resembling Allah to one of his creation. So we believe Allah Azza wa will come but we don't know the essence of how he subhanahu wa ta'ala will come, but he will come in a manner that befits his majesty and might subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَجِيءَ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِجَهَنَّمِ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَ And brought within view that day is hell. That day man will remember, but what good to him will be the remembrance. Jahannam will come on that day as the Prophet ﷺ told us in the book of Imam Muslim, as narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and it will have 70,000 rings. Each ring is held by 70,000 angels. They will be dragging it. Now, if we can imagine that day when we see this, scholar said that hell will be made visible to the disbelievers and the disobedient on that day. This is enough torture to see what is awaiting you, the punishment that's ahead of you. On that day, everybody will remember, right? But what good? Nothing can avail. No more deeds. No more good deeds, no more repentance allowed. You and your record of deeds, that's the settlement. This, this should be a, a motivation for us when we're about to sin to remember that a day will come. And we will remember every sin we did. Sorrow and regret will be of no value, no use, no benefit. He will say, oh, I wish I had sent ahead some good deeds for my life, meaning the year after. When reality is revealed, it's exposed, it's apparent, it's ahead of our eyes. Before our eyes, we see it live. People will start saying, I wish I had done. I wish I had did. I had said, I had. The Prophet as reported by Ahmed, classified as authentic by al Arnaut, said, if a slave would be dragged on his face from the day he is born until he dies at a very old age, spending or having spent all this period in obedience to Allah Azza wa He will come on that day seeing that all he has done in his life is insignificant. Now, imagine someone from the, the time he is born until he dies at a very old age. He's being dragged on his face for the sake of Allah. And he's doing something, nothing but obedience. From the terrifying events that are going to be surrounding people on that day, 
he will feel that none of that was significant. And he would wish that he could be sent back to dunya to do even more. This is for someone who's done nothing wrong. The Prophet ﷺ is describing the state of a person who's done nothing wrong. And that he will see that all of that, all of his life, which was nothing but goodness and piety, was not enough. Insignificant compared to the terrifying scenes that he is witnessing and living. And he would wish to be sent back to dunya so that he can increase. How would the state be for us? Who sin day in and day out. And delay and postpone repentance day after day. I will repent. Inshallah, I will stop. Inshallah, I won't do. I will do. I won't do. I will do. But nothing. فَيَوْمَئِذٍ لَا يُعَذِّبُ عَذَابَهُ أَحَدٍ وَلَا يُنْثِقُ وَثَاقَهُ أَحَدٍ So on that day, none will punish as severely as his punishment, Allah's punishment. And none will bind people as tightly and severely as his binding of the evildoers. So the binding and the punishment that will happen on that day cannot be, cannot be perceived because it's the work of Allah, the like of which doesn't exist and cannot be perceived. The punishment for those who were negligent or disbelieved is beyond perception and imagination and this is something we need to pause with here, brothers and sisters, that when we sin, we need to be thinking of the consequence and that the punishment is not something minor. The punishment of Allah Azza wa Jalla on the Day of Judgment is extremely severe and painful and long-lasting. So after the sorrow and regret they will be experiencing, there comes to them the punishment, the like of which cannot be perceived because it's the punishment of Allah. Again, Allah is reassuring Muhammad and the hearts of the believers that those who are punishing and oppressing in this dunya and tying like a, a hostage is tied like they used to do with the companions radiallahu anhu. Those who are doing this to you in this dunya, this exact same thing but at a different, different level and a very higher and more intense level of punishment will happen to them on the Day of Judgment. Then Allah Azza wa as the case is always in the Qur'an, Allah gives the consequence of what happens to the wrongdoers, evildoers, and then gives the consequence of the believers, those who are adherent to the commands of Allah Azza wa Allah Azza wa concludes the Surah by beautiful, reassuring, soothing verses in Surah Al-Fajr. Ya ayyatuhal nafsu al-mutma'inna irjiri ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati We ask Allah to make us a mu'min. To the righteous, it will be said, O oh, reassured soul, return to your Lord well pleased and pleasing to Him, and enter among 
my righteous servants and enter my paradise. What a beautiful call. What a beautiful call. We ask Allah that we will receive such a call. See, in the midst of this terrifying scene Allah described about the punishment and the chaining and the binding of the disobedient and the disbelievers, the scene of Jahannam approaching with its flames and the rows after rows of angels surrounding the people, each one of, this, of these issues is enough to terrify to rip the heart from the believer out of fear. In the middle of all of that comes the description of the state of the believing hearts. Ya nafsul mutma'inna. Makes you feel It takes work now. This takes effort. To be deserving of this call takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of sacrifice. You can't, you can't have everything as you wish and then expect at the end to be called the ayatuhan nafsul mutma'inna. You have to work for the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. You have to please Allah Azza wa Jal. And this entails sacrifice. This is just the essence of being deserving of the reward of Allah Azza wa and the Jannah of Allah Azza wa It's not an easy matter. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Huffati al-Jannah bil makarih Jannah is surrounded with things that are displeasing, difficult. But you have to go through them in order to reach Jannah. Return to your Lord. That same Lord that you were sacrificing for, that you were worshipping, who supported you, who reassured your hearts. Return to your Lord who is well pleased with you. Because you deserve His pleasure, because you were adhering to His call, fulfilling to His commands, refraining from His prohibitions in this dunya. So you're deserving of his pleasure in the hereafter. You were pleased and content with the decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal. You never showed discontent or anger or displeasure to whatever decree befell you in your life. You were well pleased, so he's pleased with you today. Return to your Lord who is well pleased. And you were pleasing to him and enter amongst the righteous servants. See, when you know, and this is human nature, when you know that you won't be alone, that adds to the joy. When you know that you will have your father and your mother and your children, your wife and your brothers and your sisters and the good brothers whom you loved in this dunya, when you know that you will be reunited in paradise, this is this adds to the pleasure and the heart. This adds to the joy you will feel and enjoy. Where? Enter among them where? Into a place about which the Prophet said. Jannah. He said, No, I has seen what's in it, and no ear has heard, and no heart has perceived. It's beyond your imagination and perception. The joy and bliss you will be enjoying in that Jannah. Enter 
into my Jannah. My Jannah. Again, your Lord and His Jannah. The Lord you're worshipping is promising you something that He possesses. He alone possesses. And He alone can grant. And He alone can deprive. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those who are deserving of the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal and His Jannah. And to gather us all in Jannah with our loved ones. Allahumma ameen. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanak Allahumma alhamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu.